Hey, welcome back. It's Yu Zhang. All right. So, in our first video slash podcast episode of the series,、um, we talked about business anxiety, and we talked about the first big source of anxiety, which was about earning income or earning money. Right.、Um, now, the second big source of anxiety is this: anxiety about whether You are doing it right. Whether you are good enough as a professional, as art therapist, as a facilitator, right? So this is a really big one, and so we're gonna talk about this today, right? So this anxiety about whether we're doing it right, whether we're good enough as a professional, can show up in many different ways.、Um, well, one of the common ways is really imposter syndrome. Which a lot of us might really identify with,、um, and then other ways that it can show up is really just feeling generally very nervous about our sessions.、Uh, although that is expected,、uh, as art therapists, as facilitators, feeling nervous about our sessions can be very natural.、Uh, but when it is constant, and when you feel it outside of sessions too. It can be very、uh, stressful for us, right? And another way that this anxiety about whether we're doing it right or not、uh, can show up in a way when we look at other people to validate our business, right? When we look at other people's pricing, other people's websites, other people's social media, like other professionals and colleagues, their pictures. Right when we look at all other people to validate our own business, right, our own art therapy business or practice or our facilitation business, then that's kind of a way that that anxiety can show up. Right. Another way is really when we're constantly adding more certifications, trainings, and letters after our name. Right. That's a very Common one, but we don't really think that that's just a way we're trying to compensate, and、um, it actually stems from this anxiety whether about whether we're doing it right and whether we're good enough as a professional. And the reason why we are constantly adding more certifications, trainings, letters after our name is just because we we're not sure. If we're doing it right, right, we don't feel confident in our current knowledge that we have, which is tremendous, right? That's a lot of knowledge that you have.、Um, however, you still don't feel like you know enough, right, or you're good enough right now. So you're trying to add more trainings, add more things, right? Do more things.、Um, yeah, so that is a really common、uh, occurrence. And another thing that it shows up is when you don't know what makes you different from other people. That's another common thing. Like you can't really say what makes you unique as an art therapist, right?、Um, and that really stems from this kind of mistrust, right, that we have inside about and doubt about whether we're good enough as a professional. We haven't really found what makes us val- valuable, and that, right, that leads to anxiety about whether we're doing it right and whether we're good enough. So to address this anxiety about whether we're doing it right and whether we're doing it enough or we're good enough, we have to know that there is no right way to do this. Right, because that there is an assumption there, right? When we have that anxiety, whether we're doing it right or whether we're good enough, we we're assuming that there is a way to do it good, right? That there is a、uh, a good enough, right? Person, art therapist, facilitator, professional, and we need to be that, right? But it's not black and white like that. It's not like. You're doing it right versus they're doing it wrong, or you're doing it wrong and they're doing it right. It's not good versus bad. It's not just clear cut like ethical versus unethical, right? Or 
that is professional and that is unprofessional. It's just not how it is, right? Reality is closer to a dance, right? A back and forth, a process of discovering and uncovering, a process of expressing, right? A process of learning and evolving. That's what I think our work is about. It's not a let's draw the line, and if you cross that line, you're something, right? You're you're right or you're wrong. You're good enough or you're not good enough as a professional, right? Yeah, reality is closer to a dance. I think back and forth, the process of discovery and expression and evolving. That's what I think your role is. That's what our role is. I think as art therapists and facilitators, that's what our work is about. It's not about having all the wisdom in the world, all the knowledge in the world, all the skills in the world as an art therapist or facilitator. It's about coming from a place of openness and willingness to explore, right, with clients. It's about embracing who you are as a human being and owning that, and using that as a way to give understanding to clients. It is about what you and your clients co-create together. It's not even just about you either, right? So that's what I think, and that's why that belief or assumption or thought that there is a right way to do this versus there is a wrong way to do this, and you can be good enough and you cannot be good enough. On the other hand, that in and of itself, that concept doesn't even apply because reality is not that, right? Reality is we all humans, and it's all a process of discovery. Um, you have your own unique energy, right? You have your own unique personality as a human being too. Your own perspective, your past experience, which nobody else in the whole world has. Like only you have that own past experience that make you unique, right? That make you a unique, one of a kind helper and art therapist or facilitator. And you can't be replaced by anybody else in the world. Like, really sit down with that fact. You can't be replaced by anybody in the world. That is just amazing, right? This phone can be replaced any at any point, right? However, you cannot be replaced, right? Um, it's an amazing thing. You have to own that. You have to own who you are, even outside of all the trainings that you've received, all the professional knowledge. Even, even just don't don't even look at that. You know, just look at even who you are as a human being, and know that you are good enough with that. Right, and it's not just even good enough. I think it's more than that. It makes you an incredible helper. Like you, with your past experience. Your unique perspective, your right, um, uni- unique human beingness. It makes you an incredible helper, and we're not even talking. We're not even including anything about your professional training and knowledge right here, right? So, once you switch from the belief that I don't have anything to offer to me just being me. Is the best thing I can offer. When you switch to that, then you will not have anxiety around: Am I good enough? Or am I doing this right? Right. I mean, it can pop up once in a while for sure,、uh, especially if you're doing something new. However, it's not a consistent anxiety, right? And if you think about it, it's it's exactly how we as art therapists encourage our clients, right?、Uh, it's how we encourage our clients, and when they approach a blank canvas, right? You know, a lot of times our clients, when they approach blank canvas, it's very intimidating. Because they feel like there's a right way to do it, and there's a wrong way to do it, and they don't want to do it wrong. Wrong, right? 
And so we always remind them, right, that there is no wrong way to do, to do this. There is only your way of doing it, right? And so you can approach your sessions with clients and you can approach your work and your service the same way, that it's a blank canvas and you can express yourself as the art therapist and helper and facilitator to create a unique collaboration with your own, with your clients, right? In the session, right? That coming together of different energies, different perspectives, that can create something really amazing and unique, right? And so think of it that way, like your work, it's like the same as a blank canvas. It's the same as making art. There's no wrong way to do it. So when you assume that there's no wrong way to do it, don't you feel a lot of relief, right? Isn't there a lot of like, oh man, okay, I don't have to do it a certain way, right? I don't have to be someone who I'm not. I can just be me. So, so sometimes we are able to realize this as we gain experience naturally, right? As we accumulate years of working as an art therapist, this, this like belief that there is no wrong way to do it, it's about just expression, that, or th- that thought, that concept comes naturally as we gain more experience, as we gain like 10, 20, 30 years of experience. But, you know, you don't have to wait until those years pass by you to realize this. I don't think so. You can feel confident now. You can ditch the belief that there is a a wrong way and a right way to do this, that you don't have a right thing to offer right now, or you're not good enough right now. Like you can ditch that, right? And you can instead trust yourself and trust in what you already know now, because you already know almost everything that you need to know in order to help your clients. You actually don't need to know a lot of things because <laughs> it's not the knowledge that you have. It's not the training um, that brings about transformations with clients. I think it's about how we hold ourselves, right? I think it's about the degree of belief that we hold in ourselves and and thus in the clients as well, um, that really makes a difference in, in clients' transformations, right? And that attitude of curiosity really, really helps, right? Um, and that attitude of curiosity can only happen if we let go of the belief that there is a wrong and right way to do it. And we need, we need to do it right. Right? That's what happens when we're making art. That's what happens when we draw and paint the art therapy way, right? We have to let go of the idea that there is a right way and wrong way to do it in order for us to approach the blank canvas with curiosity and play and freedom and liberation, right? Um, and not feel anxiety about what we create, right? We let go of the results, right? Which means we just let go of what, let go of the idea that there is a right or wrong way to do it. So, I think it really comes down to this, right? We just want to embrace ourselves more as art therapists, as art facilitators, even if you have zero experience, like you have no, you have never had clients before, even if so, your role is not to know more than your clients. Your role is actually embracing what you already know inside, which you already do, right? because you have experience as a human being living in this world, your role is to embrace that. Your role is to see that in you because when you see that in yourself and you see the value in yourself, you see the value in your own clients, right? 
How can you see the value in your clients when you cannot see your own value in your in yourself, right? And so the most important thing that we can do as our therapists and our facilitators, no matter how much experience we have, or no matter how little experience we have, um, and no matter how little training or knowledge we think we have, is to actually really step inside of ourselves, right? And embrace the unique person that we are. And thus we can embrace our role as our therapist, right? And thus it can feel so much easier, natural, and then you can just trust yourself in the process of the sessions. You know, I think that we often talk about that idea about trust the process, right? Um, when I was in uh, grad training in our therapy, we often threw that word around, that phrase around trust the process, right? Because we didn't trust ourselves a lot, right? When we we're starting out, and we just we're just trainees, where we have a lot don't have a lot of experience it's hard to trust ourselves so we say trust the process because you'll see that you don't need to know a lot you don't need to have every answer right you don't need to have all the skills all you need to know do is really trust um because things will happen and it will be a very beautiful dance right a process of discovery, not a process of let's find the right, correct mathematical answer here. I mean, I mean that's probably not <laughs> likely what our clients are needing from us anyway, right? They don't need the right answer. They're not here to find the right answer. They probably can search Google to find the right answer. <laughs> but it's the process of discovery, right? It's the process of like, oh, right? Huh. It's a process of sitting down and looking at something deeply, at our emotions deeply, at our thoughts deeply. It's a process of opening ourselves to see what comes up in our artworks. Uh, sometimes surprising, sometimes expected, but we're just there to witness that. Right? We're just there to trust the process. Because when we trust the process, we allow our clients to trust the same in themselves and in their own process too. So to sum it up, we talked about the really big source of anxiety that we often feel in our, our therapy business or our facilitation business. Um, the first video, the first part of the series was about you know, making income, right? anxiety about that. Um, in this video we talked about, or in this episode, we talked about the second big source of anxiety, which is about doing it right. right? Am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Am I good enough as a helper and professional? And it, this shows up in many different ways, right? It can be imposter syndrome. It can be, it could look like getting tons of certifications and even more trainings uh, constantly. It could be looking at other people's, other businesses to validate our own, right? It could be feeling like I don't have anything unique to offer, or you don't know what makes you different from other people, other helpers. So with that in mind, uh, when we have that anxiety, we can really question why is there a right or wrong, right? Question that concept even. And think of your work, your identity, and your role as a professional, as an artist who approaches a blank canvas, right? We approach it with curiosity. We approach it with openness. We approach it uh, like a dance, back and forth, a discovery process of evolution, not a process of, oh, let's see what's right. And, <laughs> and score ourselves based on that, right? See if we're good enough based on that. So hopefully that will help you. 
it's really basically applying what we know and <laughs> applying uh, what we do with our clients to ourselves as professionals, I think. Um, and when we do actually really reflect on ourselves like this, take a moment and challenge our belief, right? I believe that there's a wrong way to do this and we're not sure if we're good, in, good enough or if we have anything to offer to people. When we question those things, we grow so much, right? We grow so much as professionals and as helpers, and that helps our clients in turn, indirectly, indirectly, and directly. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and video. It's I think it's really important to address because right? we this business anxiety that we have often stem from this, from just feeling very doubtful about our worth and value as a helper. So I hope you enjoyed this again. Um, I'm going to come back with another episode all about business, all about social media to help you with your own art therapy business or art facilitation business and practice. So until then, have a really good one and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye-bye.